So they're tapping into that extraordinary other area of um, water. But Job says this in in, um, Job chapter 29, verse 19. I'm rushing a little bit here, but you can write down the scriptures and check them out because this is what we're doing on Wednesday night. We're coming to a place of being still enough. Now, if I just backtrack, dew forms in the night times from evening to morning when the heat in the thing like grass or the ground around about your car if it's outside, thin metal areas and stuff like that, or roofs, um, releases its heat, radiates its heat out and the other atmosphere air comes upon it and cools it. So it, by the time that all happens, uh, water forms on the grass. And I checked it up because I did this in India and I ran outside early in the morning uh, just to check that there was dew on the grass. And there was. And uh, it wasn't in the full summer season there, but it was still hot during the day. But how it was there, and, and there it was. And he says, my roots... What am I saying here? Yeah, my roots will reach to the water and the dew will lie all night on my branches. Now, he was looking back to the prosperous time in his life, not where he was. He was looking at the prosperity and the blessing and the fruitfulness that he had when everything went right. But you know what? In our lives in Christ, we can have the dew on us in the good times and we can have the dew on us in the bad times. It's just a matter of getting still enough. Now, the point about this, the, how the dew forms, when the heat is radiated out and the coolness comes down and is transformed into water, is that, you know, we can be steamed up about a lot of things. We can be hot under the collar about a lot of things. We can be frustrated with a lot of things in life. We can be disappointed with God. We can feel like stuff's not going right and we can get hot under the collar. And God says, be still. Because when you're still, you'll let the heat off you. And the coolness of his touch will come upon us and dew will form on your heart. Isn't that fantastic? The dew will lie all night on my branches. He's only looking at the good times. But dew comes in the night. Amen? Dew comes in the night. Morning, what does the scripture say? Weeping may endure for the night, but what? Joy comes in the morning because you've got dew on you. Hallelujah. It's good stuff. There's amazing stuff in this word. You know, I like sharing it because God makes me look good in front of people. My glory, look at this. My glory will remain fresh in me. My glory, the touch of God's glory in me, will remain fresh in me. And the bow ever new in my hand. In other words, his weapons of victory and success never get old and daggy. But the dew makes the difference. It keeps the glory of God fresh in him and his ability to stand in the evil day strong. Hallelujah. Isaiah 26. Now this is what we're doing on Thursday night. We're just taking time out to be still to listen to worship music, to listen to the situation and let God's dew touch us. 26 verse 19, look at this. But your dead will live, their bodies will rise, you will dwell. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. The, the factor of this thing is death, lost dreams, Lost hopes, things that have been dormant, things that have been left on the shelf. You've had words from God. You had a vision once. Lost vision is now the case. It looks like it's dead. Get in the presence of God and soak. Let the dew form on your heart. And what happens here is shout for joy because there's a resurrection factor in the dew. There's a resurrection refreshing in the dew. If things are not coming to pass or as you want to, or you haven't seen the rains come yet, don't sit around lamenting that the rain hasn't come. Take time because the dew is always forming on you all the time. People are always saying, oh, we want the rain of revival. We want the rain of revival. Yes, we want it. The former and the latter rains, but dew is always falling when there's no rain. You don't have to be without the substance of heaven's touch 
just because there's no revival rain? Come on. Soaking is the introduction God's revived in the church to bring us back to the place where dew of heaven, the touch of heaven, will form on us. Hosea 14. I think I finish here. Hallelujah. Again, this is an amazing picture of the compassion of God, the goodness of God drawing Hosea, uh, in Hosea, drawing Israel back. And in this chapter, he's, he's got so many amazing things. He says it reveals his heart and character. And he says in verse 4, chapter 14, I will heal their waywardness and, and love them freely, for my anger is turned away from them. I, look at verse 5, mark this down. I will be like the dew to them. I will be like the dew. I will be like the dew. It's not just a sense of a touch of the revelation of the Spirit of God. It's God himself coming upon us. In the stillness and the quietness, God himself, I will be the Jew to Israel. Who wants that? We want that connection. We want that intimacy. We come back to what we started with. Be still and know that I'm God. Then it says here, I will be like the Jew to Israel. And what happens after that? Look at the prosperity and the fruitfulness that they prophesied in Moses and Isaac. I will be like the Jew of Israel. He will blossom like a lily, like a cedar in Lebanon. He will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like the olive tree. His fragrance like the cedar of Lebanon. Men will dwell again in his shade. You'll be a blessing to other people. He will flourish like the grain. He will blossom like a vine. And his fame will be like the, the, the wine from Lebanon. So you look at this. There's blossom twice. Splendor will be evident. Fragrance, the fragrance of Christ, which the Bible talks about. Others will go, come under our shade. In other words, we'll be a comfort and, and from the heat for other people. We will flourish like grain. We will blossom. And his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. In other words, people will want to know what you're saying. This guy's got something to say. This woman's got something that I love to hear what they're saying. Mary sat at Jesus' feet and uh, she wanted to drink up the dew that she, she was still. Martha was busy. But she sat down and let her, the heat of her experiences of life, the adverse issues of life, radiate off her and let the download of God's love come upon her and she saw it. So, finishing. Just write down Psalm 91, 1 and 2, and Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of His wings. It's just taking time out. It's just giving God the chance for, by being still in ourselves and letting the heat of the issues of adverse circumstances radiate off us and let the coolness of His touch come and dew forms upon us. I'll add some more stuff on Wednesday night. Father, we just thank you for your divine touch. It's amazing. We're always waiting for rain, but there's all this, this, this fluid substance of your revelation love available to us every day of our lives. Refreshing and strength, fruitfulness, flourishing, fragrance, you are the due to us. And Father, we just commit ourselves to you to learn to discipline our hearts and souls to be still and know, know you in an intimate way. In Jesus' name, amen.